Uh, Dr. Tycho Leifels, uh, he's the head of product management at uh, Bachem. After a diploma in chemistry followed by a PhD thesis, uh, he held various commercial roles in the life science industry in the last 20 years, e.g. at Pfizer, MEFA, or also Teva Europe. Since uh, 2019, he's heading uh, the, the product management at the CDMO company, Bachem, that specialized in complex APIs like peptides and oglio. Uh, nucleotides. In the following talk, Taiko will highlight which benefits the collaboration with the CDMO can have in the development of complex APIs. And after the talk, we will have uh, some time also for Q and A's. Um, Taiko, the floor is yours. Thank you. Gretzi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation and for the introduction. In my talk today, I want to convince you that doing it right can mean not doing it yourself and instead relying on a skilled and experienced partner for your development and manufacturing needs. Those differ depending on the customer and where in the life cycle they are with their product. What a contract development and manufacturing organization can offer to meet these needs will vary and my answer is strongly biased. It's based on my experience here at Bachem. Bachem is specialized in complex active pharmaceutical ingredients, namely peptides and oligonucleotides. We value a very long-term partnership uh, with the companies we work with, and they vary from small to very large companies in the life science industry. And we're very, very proud of our contribution to important medicines that improve the life of patients around the globe. Bachem is the market leader in peptides and is strongly growing. Um, we also have some small molecules and uh, we also uh, do have uh, oligonucleotides in our portfolio uh, already since a few years, but we are not uh, involved in the, in the recent uh, vaccines. We made roughly 400 million sales in 2020, are strongly growing, short, uh, a bit short of 30% uh, growth and have about uh, 1,500 employees at the moment. Our headquarters is in Bubendorf. It's close to Basel in Switzerland. Um, at the same time, this is also our largest GMP facility for peptides and oligonucleotides. In Vienna, near the Lake of Geneva in Switzerland, we have our large scale GMP facility for small molecules and starting materials. That's for example, the plant where roughly 80, 90% of the worldwide uh, propofol uh, manufacturing is being done, a product that was used and is used now again uh, in large quantities uh, for people suffering from COVID-19. We also have two GMP production sites for peptides and oligonucleotides in California. One is in Torrance, that's close to LA, and the other one is in Vista near San Diego. In St. Helens in the UK, we have a non-GMP manufacturing site, and in Tokyo in Japan, we have a sales office for the Asian region. At Bachem, we segment our business in three parts. One is the large catalog of non-GMP products that's used for research, but we also offer custom synthesis. So if you have uh, a special target, we will do this for you. We also offer specialities for cosmetics, diagnostics, or as adjuvants. Um, most of them can be ordered from stock. But by far the larger part of our business, that's 90 plus percent, is active pharmaceutical ingredients. And we offer on one side CMC development for new chemical entities, both peptides and oligonucleotides. And at the moment we're involved in around 150 such projects. And the third part are commercial API, and that's including both still IP protected NCEs, so new chemical entities, but also generic products. The value that we bring to our customers comes from satisfying their needs. But the first challenge is that we have very different customers from startups to big pharma, from innovators to generic companies. And yes, all customers want the lowest possible price, the highest quality and reliability and everything delivered yesterday. 
In the details, these needs, however, vary substantially. And we just heard uh, from uh, Timo Flessner before, they want to uh, invest in sustainability. They, they want uh, a resilient supply chain, et cetera. So that's additional needs uh, that vary a bit from customer to customer as a small startup might not uh, have the same needs at the beginning. For such a university research group or a startup with, with just a handful of employees, their project is sometimes the first development they ever did. So they rely heavily on our expertise for more than 50 years in the business and dedicated project managers who consult them. But we also serve many of the leading pharmaceutical companies. Um, for them, a reliable experienced partner is important too, but their focus uh, is more on the ability of a third party supplier to adapt to their processes. The customer needs also change during the life cycle of a product. So speed and flexibility are key in the early development, but the ability to manufacture the desired back size and the perfect regulatory dossier, they gain importance during the later development stages. And the secure supply chain, compliance with all regulations, the lowest price, they often have the highest priority once the product is commercialized. So depending on the focus area of the customer, sustainability, a well-planned life cycle management, so a second third generation process, or the possibility to have additional intellectual property um, that can all be of interest. And once the product becomes generic, price pressure increases even more and the volume start to decrease. And sometimes the product is then divested and transferred to a new owner and this needs to be supported as well. Let's now imagine you start with the discovery of a new product. And at Bachem, you will find first of all, a large number of peptides in our catalog. And we are also able to quickly deliver a new sequence of your choice as custom synthesis. Our experience allows us to deliver uh, also complex products with superior purity. Of course, you can also do this yourself, but you probably do not have the large number of synthesizers, nor the experience, and you probably end up slower, more, more expensive, and at lower quality. So a major success factor afterwards is how fast you're able to reach the market with your product. Once you filed the patent for, you, for the discovery, the clock starts ticking and you start losing some of the 20 years of exclusivity that you have, and the competition is usually not sleeping either. A lot of effort is therefore made to shorten the timelines wherever possible. And one of the key goals is often to squeeze phase one and two as much as possible, and often even to do them in parallel. And that's bad news for a CDMO, because the API development, that's a very intense time and a lot of work packages need to be completed during this period. And therefore you want a partner who is fast, flexible and experienced and knows exactly what needs to be done, when and how. The GMP development then um, progresses at high speed and uh, you very often need to scale up. And as often you do not really know at that time what batch size you will need for the commercial product. Your next step depends on the outcome of your clinical trials. So the results define the indications you pursue. It can trigger new larger trials or even a step back and eventually also the end of the project. And while all this is not clear, you need to be ready to manufacture larger quantities or stop the project. The Swiss Army, we used to call this Warte, Sekle, Warte. That translates into wait, run, wait. Not very efficient, but absolutely unavoidable. If you have to do this yourself, are you ready to run, willing to wait? You need at least two years to build and qualify a new production line. And building an experienced workforce takes way longer. If you work with a CDMO, we will already have production lines in different sizes from lab scale to a thousand liter reactors. And we also have all the equipment for purification like ion exchange lines, large scale HPLC or tray lyophilizers. Plus our employees have many years of experience. So you save a lot of time. You have 
much less financial exposure as well. And uh, if you get rid of a workforce that is no longer needed, that's also something that's not really good to, to read in the press. For many startups who want to sell their assets, it's important that they are able to show a solid plan for scale up. However, they also at the same time lack the financial abilities to make such an investment. And having a partner who has established manufacturing capabilities can be a strong argument if you want to sell your company or your product after phase two, for example. And then once you're ready to register a product, you want the perfect file for the API, but of course you want to spend as little as possible uh, to get there. Our registration specialists have a lot of experience with these complex API and they know which corners can be cut and where you're likely to risk your approval timeline because you need to repeat work packages to reply to authorities questions. And once your registration is through, you want to launch ASAP. And once again, that's like, wait, run, wait. For a peptide that is manufacturing by coupling one amino acid after the other, uh, synthesis and purification can take two months or even more. We have some LPPS processes that take almost two years to complete. And this, of course, comes on top of your lead times for the finished dose formulation and the release. And especially for sterile products, that can take quite a while. Of course, manufacturing the API would take the same time if you do it yourself. But where we as a CDMO have often a big advantage is starting materials. Receiving them can take several months from the time when you place the order. And Bachem produces similar products every single week. And we have most starting materials on stock for many of those products. So on one hand, they're on stock, but we can also negotiate better prices. And we already know where to get the best quality and we can start immediately. Securing the starting materials is one step we take to harden the supply chain. And we heard about the resilience from Timo Flesner as well uh, being a key thing. And uh, that was something we read in the press a lot during uh, COVID. So securing the starting materials includes having them on stock, having more than one supplier, knowing the quality of the products and suppliers, and in our case, being able to manufacture them them ourselves if required. We have this Viona plant where we can do all the amino acids ourselves. Equally important are solid high quality processes. So nothing is as bad as not being able to produce because you have failed an audit. At Bachem, we did not get a single critical observation like a warning letter doing an audit in the last 10 years. In most inspections by FDA and Swiss Medic, there's not even a form 8, 843 issued. So that's the, the minor uh, findings. High quality processes, innovation and automation will also help you to prevent batches that are rejected at our site because of an out of specification. And if something unforeseen happens, redundancy helps to balance it out. And we have therefore several production lines uh, in all sizes, and we also have several sites. Several sites might not always help you because of regulatory issues, but several lines very often help you. And most commercial products, we are also manufacturing from stock startings to stock of the end product. So they're available immediately without lead times, and allow quick response to changing demands like a failed batch at one of our customers. Innovation is then a key driver uh, for competitive advantages like better prices, but also for sustainability. Let me give you a few examples of this. One is continuous chromatography. That, that's a technology that allows us to use smaller equipment for the same batch size. So you can use, for example, a 60 centimeter HPLC column instead of a one meter column. You also reduce the amount of organic solvent that is required to, uh, to do the HPLC and that afterwards needs to be lyophilized out. And on top, you get the product in a higher purity. Of course, this doesn't come for free as the development of the method is more demanding, but the result is really convincing. It uh, has lower cost and the efficiency is really good for the environment. 
The second example is molecular hiving. That's a new technology at somewhere positioned between liquid phase peptide synthesis or LPPS in short, that's used for short peptides and solid phase peptide synthesis or short SPPS that's used for long peptides. And with molecular hiving, you're coupling the peptide to an anchor that is soluble. So compared to SPPS, where you couple it with a resin that's uh, non-soluble. And then again, compared to uh, established SPPS, the pathway for the development of the process is more demanding. But besides commercial advantages, like manufacturing larger batch sizes, you're also having a product that is manufactured completely without using CMR, so carcinogenic, mutagenic, or reprotoxic substances. One demand uh, that is gaining in importance as well. And automation is another key innovation. And it's not just the answer to the challenge that uh, we face because we're manufacturing in Switzerland and in California, which are not exactly the places that come to your mind when you're looking for cheap labor. But Baloo, our robot in this picture, he will work all three shifts 24-7, um, needs very little breaks. And the obvious advantage is the higher speed and the lower cost, but the higher flexibility is very important. You don't need to consider shift ends or even weekends when you plan a synthesis. A less obvious advantage, and that comes to digitalization and uh, industry 4.0 is also, you generate much more information about your process. You have a much tighter control of it. You're capturing temperature, acidity and the like every minute, or if desired, even every second instead of entering them into a protocol manually every hour or sometimes every, every five hours. So paired with AI, you can then optimize your processes on parameters you did not even know were a thing before. And you can even start optimizing maintenance intervals, et cetera. But most importantly, once you have the optimal settings, you can repeat them spot on every single time. Being able to produce at large scale is very important too. It's mainly important to timely deliver the required quantities because scaling up a process has favorable effect on cost. However, doubling your batch size will not cut your price in half. You need double the amount of all starting materials and consumables and sometimes key equipment like HPLC or lyophilizers do not scale that easy. The most effective way to improve price for a complex API is an optimized process. When I was doing my PhD, I was happy if I got a yield of 80% for, uh, for any kind of synthesis. I even got suspicion when I read papers that reported more than 95%. And we often joked in our work group that probably the researchers had uh, included the magnetic stir into the weight. Now, if your yield is 80% per step, for a 50 amino acid peptide, and that's both for coupling and deprotecting, your overall yield would be 0.001%. And you would struggle really hard to find your product in the nasty mixture that uh, you call your result. 95% yield would give you an overall yield of 8%, 99% increases it to 60, and 99.5% to 77% overall yield. So a 0.5% improvement from 90% stepwise yield to 99.5% increases your total yield by 17%. And the higher the base purity after the synthesis, the less material you will also lose during purification. So now you probably understand why starting materials with the highest possible quality are absolutely key for us. And we save a lot of money by buying the most expensive starting materials. And as some key starting materials like side chains, so very often those are lipids or um, pegylations uh, that uh, happen at the moment. And being to able to manufacture them at top quality yourself can be a big factor when the available quality from suppliers is not sufficient. Ending with a high quality product with high purity is not only essential for your yields, it's also really a big thing for uh, 
the overall cost because the new FDA regulations for high complex API require that you um, identify every single uh, impurity above 0.10%. And you therefore really want as little of those as somehow possible to avoid expensive additional toxicity and immunogenicity studies. So the hurdles for manufacturing a product yourself are often high. They need a large upfront investment, especially for complex products. So working with a specialized CDMO gives you much more flexibility. Even the cost is usually better if you work with a specialist, despite the fact that they also want to earn something in the process. And in my experience, there's five key elements for choosing a CDMO. And those are innovation because cutting edge technology and the expertise, uh, they offer optimal processes and that's for you the key for competitive prices. Then you want a partner that has operational excellence because good planning and flexibility and speed, uh, that's what you require. Top quality, not just for products, but also for processes and services, that's your guarantee for reliability. And most of all, you want a partner who focuses on the customer because that guarantees that they understand your needs. And for all this, and I can only repeat what I heard in earlier talks, you need the right people, people who are care, people who are willing to go the extra mile. And a good CDMO does not just sell you a product, they support you with their experience to make your product a success story. So now I thank you very much for your attention. I hope that I was able to give you some examples of why I think that partnering with a good CDMO is often a better solution than doing the work yourself. And of course, I'm available for your questions now. Michael, thank you very much uh, for that insights, how CDMO can help. Um, yeah, we have now some time for questions. Uh, you can just unmute you and uh, go ahead, or you can write it in the, in the chat. I will have an eye on it. So are there any questions? Not yet. No one wants to be the first one. So then, Michael, do you have yeah. a question? Well, if, if nobody else, <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, yeah, uh, very interesting. And um, I'm, I, I've just learned that Bachem is not only doing um, peptides, but also oligonucleotides. And I think um, oligonucleotides uh, have become very, very popular over the last years now. Is, 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 can you talk a little bit about the technology that is used to manufacture only nucleotides on scale? And, 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 and what scale are we talking about? Are we talking about grams or, or, or kilos or what, what is a typical... Uh, I'm a chemist by education, so I, I, I'm more into small molecules, so I don't know too much about uh, oligonucleotides. So can, can you talk a little bit about typical demand and technology for oligonucleotides? The demand for oligonucleotides really depends on the indications. So uh, uh, we're doing oligonucleotides already since more than 10 years, um, very often in very small indications. So uh, at the moment, our key indication, and I ca can't talk about the customer, is uh, ALS. Uh, so um, that's small volumes. The technology used is pretty similar to uh, what you use in peptide chemistry. So resin bound, uh, you need, the, the reactions are quicker. Uh, therefore you really need very good pumps uh, to do this. But um, other than that, the scale is really something that depends on the, on the product. So you can do from uh, grams to, to kilograms, there everything's uh, really possible. It, it really depends on, what target uh, and especially indication your customers after. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. up to kilograms. Okay, thank you. At the moment we're investing uh, 500 mil millions in uh, new buildings as well. So uh, there will be uh, quite big additional uh, sites. The one that I showed in one of the picture that's uh, also peptides, but mainly oligonucleotides. And one big thing with oligonucleotides uh, in the past was always uh, how do you pack them to actually use them? 
So lipids play a very important role uh, in, in the finished dose product as well to stabilize them. Okay, thank you. I have a question, Tycho. Um, you mentioned you work uh, together with the big farmer, but also with startups. And uh, I think big farmer, they should be used to, to work with CDMOs, but uh, for startups, how should they prepare before they contact you? And when is the best uh, moment to contact you? What kind of data perhaps should be already available, for example? Of course, the, the better they know what they want, uh, the easier it is. But um, actually, startups, they rely much more on CDMOs uh, compared to big pharma. Uh, you also heard BASF, for example, they're trying to do it first themselves. And uh, some of big pharma is, is still uh, going down that route. For the more complex your API is, the less they do that. So we have a lot of big pharma also in our thing. And of course, they already have their processes uh, and everything's clear for them. And for the small startups, basically, very often fi their financial uh, background uh, defines what they can do and how fast they can do it. So. Uh, it really depends. You can't really say that is needed prior to contacting a CDMO. Uh, the earlier, the better. We can also help you with, uh, with those requirements. Uh, you will need the, the API in different qualities. You will first need it, of course, as a, as a non-GMP product for your uh, bench work. And if we already have experience producing this, of course, we can use this experience afterwards to to make a gmp process out of it but uh, basically whenever you want to start if you want to start only at gmp if you want to start later um doesn't really matter to us the earlier usually the better okay so no too early to contact you nope okay great um you also mentioned um that additional ip could be uh generated Uh, in, in the process. Usually also startups have some fear about that because for them it's uh, also very, very important. Uh, how is that, how is that uh, organized? Who, who belong or to whom belongs the IP if there is additional IP? That also, again, really depends on what kind of IP it is. So if it's IP around uh, the molecule itself, that's usually work we do for Uh, one customer and this IP will belong to the customer. But then there's also IP like those things like molecular hiving, continuous chromatography, um, certain steps like enzymatic processes that uh, might be used for more than one molecule. And those is IP that belongs to Bachem, but can of course uh, trigger a, a longer uh, exclusivity period also for uh, for a customer or make it more difficult to offer a generic product uh, at a good price okay thank you very much um so are, are there any additional questions from the audience that seems not the case and uh, we are uh uh in, in time, exactly in time. So thank you very much, Taiko, for, for the talk and also for, for your answers to the Q&A.